Today we're going to investigate the mystery of Thailand's spirit houses. In Thailand, there are plenty of physical clues that remind you of where you are. In Thailand, a sense of place. Ornate temples glitter in the sun with their golden chedis. Old traditional houses endure the tropical sun and rain with strong and heavy teak timbers. But venture deeper into Thailand and you start to see buildings that could have been built anywhere and you begin to lose that precious sense of place. But wait, what's that? Small structures dot the urban landscape. These are Thailand's spirit houses. Although Thailand is very much a Buddhist country, many ancient folk practices persist. Some may call these superstitions. However you choose to look at them, they continue to bind society together here in the land of smiles. Let's take a look at the spirit houses and what they mean to Thai people. Today I'm at a store that sells spirit houses and spirit house supplies. The first spirit house, and probably the most common, is called Santa Yai. And uh, you can see it has four pillars supporting it. If you look inside, you can see two seated figures. They are the grandmother and grandfather, representing ancestors, or um, in my case, they would not be my ancestors, but just basically the people who have lived here before. The second type of spirit house is called San Shao Ti. It's got a single pillar, and it's usually more ornate. Um, I would translate it as roughly uh, the house of the guardian spirit. And you can see it's got a uh, single upright figure in the middle of the little house. Um, I've always thought it was the Buddha, but it's actually a, an angel or a guardian spirit. Another thing you'll see is San Prapum, which is a not really a spirit house, but a shrine to the Hindu deity Brahma. He's got four faces, and I'm sure there's a symbolic meaning behind that. To my mind, it's just shows that he's going to watch your back for you? I don't know. One non-Hindu figure is Shivaga Komapaj, who was the uh, personal physician to the Buddha. His figure is often seen in massage businesses. A variety of offerings may be left to these shrines, depending on the shrine and the spirit which is thought to be inhabiting it. Flower garlands, incense, water, these are common offerings. Sometimes a betel nut kit is offered to the grandmother and grandfather spirits. Betel nut use is not common in Thailand now, but it's understood to have been popular in the past, so it makes sense to offer these to the ancestors. Sometimes I will see a bottle of strawberry Fanta left before the shrine, opened, with a straw in the bottle. I'm told that the red color of the soda suggests a blood sacrifice. Well, thank you for joining me on this exploration of Thailand's spirit houses. Stay tuned on this channel. I'll be releasing a new series, Famous Monsters of Thailand.